Chemistry lecture number 18, Rutherford's gold foil experiment. How are electrons, protons, and neutrons put together to form an atom? J.J. Thompson, who discovered the electron, suggested that the atom was made of a large positive region with smaller electrons distributed throughout the region. And this would make the atom look like plum pudding, which is an English pastry that has plums baked into bread. Thompson's model became known as the plum pudding model. I suppose the American equivalent would be the blueberry muffin model or the chocolate chip cookie model. So I have ugh, a chocolate chip cookie and some blueberry muffins. So yeah, the Thompson model is that uh, you've got these electrons here embedded in a large positive region. And then uh, uh, or a blueberry muffin. Another uh, model would be, so these uh, blueberries here would be the electrons embedded inside this region that's supposed to be uh, positive. Uh, in any case, Thompson believed that small electrons were embedded in a large positive piece of matter. And let's see. Here's a picture of uh, plum pudding. So this is a, this is a, I guess it's kind of like Banana nut bread? I don't know, but you see, you got these little plums embedded in the uh, baked into the uh, bread there. So that's what plum pudding uh, looks like. <clears throat> and there's a more scientific picture of the plum pudding model. You've got this positive region with electrons embedded in this large positive region. Excuse me. Before we go on, we need to remember that opposite charges attract and like charges repel. If two positive charges came close to each other, they would repel each other. So if I have a positive charge and I have a positive charge here, and if this charge came close to this one, it would be pushed away from this positive charge because similar charges repel each other. Now in the plum pudding model, the positive charge is spread over a large area. And we can say that the charge is being spread thin, like a small amount of peanut butter over a large slice of bread. And since the charge is thin, the strength of the charge at a particular location would be weak. So, with the uh, plum pudding model, the analogy would be if we had uh, peanut butter spread over a uh, piece of bread. So let's say the peanut butter here represents a uh, positive charge. And instead of the positive charge being concentrated uh, in a single area, this positive charge is spread. And the more you spread it, the thinner it gets. So at any point here, the peanut butter will be thin, or the amount of positive charge would be thin. And since the amount of positive charge is thin, so to speak, it would have a weak, uh, a weak electric field. Right? The amount of positive charge at any one location would be very small since it's being spread so thin. Okay. Alright, so since the positive charge at a particular location in the atom is weak, another positive charge that approaches the atom would experience a weak repulsion. An alpha particle has positive charge. According to the plum pudding model, if an alpha particle was shot at an atom, the particle would pass through or pass the atom with very little repulsion. So, if you have a certain amount of uh, positive charge, but then you spread that positive charge around, that positive charge is thin. I guess you could refer to it as thin positive charge. And that would mean that if another positive charge uh, came close to it, uh, the amount of repulsion would be so weak that it would just pass straight through it or it would just pass straight by it. All right? If, on the other hand, the, <coughs> excuse me, the positive charge were concentrated, there would be a greater degree of repulsion. Now, Ernest Rutherford and his team, uh, two gentlemen by the name of Geiger and Marston, tested the plum pudding model. By the way, Geiger was the guy who invented the uh, Geiger counter. Anyway, these three uh, scientists, with Rutherford leading, uh, did a series of experiments to test the plum pudding model. And they shot alpha particles at a thin sheet of gold foil. You've heard of aluminum foil? Well, they used gold foil. Um, gold foil can be pounded very thin, so thin, in fact, that um, they can get to something like, you know, maybe 400 atoms of uh, gold thick. So 
pounding gold very thin is almost the equivalent of being able to have a, a single, well, yeah, very close to a single layer of uh, gold atoms. Anyway, if the alpha particles passed through the gold foil, uh, it would hit a barrier behind the foil. So, here's a side view of a piece of uh, gold foil, and then they would shoot alpha particles at it, and alpha particles have a, a positive charge. And if the alpha particles passed through the gold foil, then it would hit a barrier behind the foil. All right. Now the barrier is chemically treated to give flashes of light when it was struck. And this barrier surrounded the gold foil in a circle. So here's our gold foil, here's the alpha particle, and then they had this barrier surrounding it in a circle. Thus, if the alpha particles bounced off the foil, a flash of light could be seen on the barrier in front of the foil. So here's what happened. The alpha particle, if it went through, it would strike the barrier and then there would be a flash of light that they could see. And if the alpha particle bounced off the foil, they would see a flash of light in front of uh, the foil. Now the plum pudding model predicted that the alpha particles would pass through the foil and hit the barrier behind the foil. As expected, most of the alpha particles pass through the gold foil. However, some particles were deflected at wide angles and some even bounced off the foil. This would not happen if the positive charge of an atom was spread out. So let's review. The Thompson model says that the amount of positive charge here is spread out and diffuse, so the positive charge in this area is very thin. So if an alpha particle, which has a positive charge, passed through the atom or passed it, the thinness of the distribution of positive charge here wouldn't be strong enough to repel the uh, positive charge of the alpha particle. It would just go straight through. Or if it was passing by, um, it would just pass by straight. All right, so thin layer of uh, positive charge uh, wasn't strong enough uh, to repel it. And I guess another analogy would be if we had magnets, and we know we can make magnets stronger by collecting them together. If we separate the magnets, uh, they're not as strong. So the influence of the magnets uh, wouldn't be as strong. <clears throat> so there wouldn't be much influence if a particle were to pass through. On the other hand, if we concentrate the magnets, then the magnets would have greater influence. Well, likewise, since the positive charge isn't concentrated, uh, it doesn't have much influence on other positive charges. That's what the Thompson model predicts, at least. Everything should just pass through. So here's what actually happened. As predicted, most of the alpha particles passed straight through, and they saw these little flashes of light right here. But then occasionally, an alpha particle would be bounced back or it would be scattered at a really wide angle. So the Thompson model did not predict these bounce backs or these uh, scatterings at wide angles. It just predicted things would go straight through. Now Rutherford suggested that the only way alpha particles could be scattered at wide angles would for, be for the positive charge in the atom to be highly concentrated in a small region. Now, as a result of the work done by Rutherford, Geiger, and Marsden, our current model of the atom is as follows. Protons and neutrons occupy the center of the atom called the nucleus. Protons and neutrons are called nucleons, by the way. The nucleus is very small. Electrons orbit far from the nucleus. And this structure creates a lot of space in the atom, allowing positive particles to pass through. And if a positive charge approaches the nucleus, it is strongly repelled by the concentrated charge in the nucleus, causing deflection at a wide angle. All right, so let's summarize this model and how it explains the results of the gold foil experiment. So, instead of the positive charge being spread out, it's concentrated at a single point. Um, in uh, this single point here we call the nucleus. There's a lot of space in the atom and the electrons are sort of orbiting around far away. So this space allows most of the alpha particles 
pass straight through. So here are the alpha particles and they have a positive charge. They're just passing straight through since there's so much space in the atom. But if an alpha particle comes close to the nucleus, it gets reflected or scattered at an angle. And this occurs because the amount of positive charge that's concentrated here is strong enough to exert a strong repulsive force on this other positive charge that's approaching. And there really is a tremendous amount of space inside the atom. Uh, if the nucleus was the size of a ping pong ball, uh, the electron would be the size of a tennis ball. And the electron would then be more than 14 football fields away from the nucleus. So if you have a ping pong ball right here, you have all these football fields uh, away from it. And I can't draw 14, but the electron would be way out here, 14 football fields later. Okay, so this has been chemistry. Lecture number 18, and this has been Rutherford's gold foil experiment. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, All you have to do is go to www.richardlouis.com. All right. Thanks for watching.